welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course sandhi in paninian grammar in this lecture we will continue studying the ach sandhi or the vowel sandhi we said that this ach sandhi is of two types ekasthanik ekadesha and dvisthanik ekadesha ekasthanik ekadesha stands for one substitute in place of one substituent ek sthani sthani is substituent and ek sthani one substituent and ek adesh and one substitute in case of dvisthanik ekadesh we have two sthanis two substituents and one substitute to contrast that we say that this first type is ekasthanik ekadesh we also stated that there are two instances of this ekasthanik ekadesh they are eko yanachi the sutra which states the yan sandhi and the second instance of this ekasthanik ekadesh is a yavayav sandhi stated by the sutra echo yavayavaha amongst these two right now we are studying the first instance namely yan sandhi stated by the sutra eko yan achi the ekasthanik ekadesha is stated in the ashtadhyayi in this particular section namely from 6172 up to 6183 and this ekasthanika ekadesh can be diagrammatically represented in this particular manner as shown on this slide so a plus b b coming immediately after a in close proximity that means in the samhita mode and this plus sign indicates that samhita mode so a plus b and a is substituted by c a is the sthani ek sthani and c is the adesh one substitute so eventually a plus b is the input and by the application of ekoyanachi we get c plus b as the output b remains unchanged only a gets substituted by c in this way diagrammatically we can represent the yan sandhi or the ayavayava sandhi and they are stated in this particular section 6172 up to 6183 in this particular section now when we study yan sandhi we first of all studied the sutra eko yanachi we noted down what is ik what is yan and what is ach we also studied how to form the pratyahara from the data given in the 14 sutras after having comprehended the meaning of ik yan and ach we also studied the meaning of the cases the sixth case stands for in place of the seventh case means immediately before and then we made the meaning of ik yan achi clear we said that immediately before an ach ik is substituted by yan we also noted that there is an adhikara called samhitayam 
when in samhita mode so when ik followed by ach is in the samhita mode then substitute ik by yan that is the meaning of eko yanachi that we arrived at then we looked at the concept of uddeshya and vidheya and applied it in this particular sutra what we found was ik and ach are uddeshyas already known elements and yan is the vidheya something stated a new by this particular statement in the form of a sutra then we introduced the savarna grahaka sutra anudit savarnasya cha pratyaya 1169 and we said that according to this sutra when an meaning all the vowels including ik as well as ach all the vowels they stand for their homogeneous sound when they are uddeshyas and not the vidheya by application of this particular sutra we expanded the meaning of eko yanachi by saying that ik stands for a number of sounds and ach also stands for a number of sounds we also eliminated certain obvious combinations for example plut and some other combinations then we studied individual examples and in these examples we followed certain scheme where we showed the sthani as well as the right hand side environment in red ink and the substitute in blue ink and we also used an arrow right hand moving arrow with green ink filled to indicate that the output is produced by application of the sutra so we have discussed individual cases individual examples and have shown that yan sandhi indeed takes place now in this lecture we are going to further discuss some more examples and also are going to have some discussion we are going to study the examples of this yan sandhi in the light of an unwritten principle and that principle is stated in the form of a verse in the tradition and that verse is quoted on this particular slide samhita ekapade nitya nitya dhatu pasargayo ho nitya samase vakye tu sa vivaksham apekshate this is that verse this verse is enlisting some features some features of samhita and most importantly when this samhita is obligatory as we have already discussed the background for the sandhi to take place is samhita the close proximity in which sounds are uttered that is samhita and when such a samhita is the mode of utterance then the sandhis take place then the yan sandhi takes place so this verse tells us where all is the samhita obligatory meaning thereby that the yan sandhi will also be obligatory in those cases and in this particular lecture we shall study examples which illustrate these points so we will take the examples of yan sandhi in ekapada examples of yan sandhi between dhatu and upasarga examples of yan sandhi in the compound and also within the sentence and how when vivaksha is expected how the sandhi does not take place 
Previously, the examples were focused on the combinations of sthani and nimitta. The previous examples they highlighted what was the sthani, what was the substituent, and what was the nimitta. And there are various combinations that are possible. Short vowel plus long vowel combination, different vowels altogether. And the resultant form is the yansandhi and so on and so forth. That was the focus. In this lecture, our focus is the locations, various levels where Samhita is obligatory. So this verse says that Samhita is obligatory within one pada. So we shall focus on this one pada and take some examples and illustrate how Yant Sandhi happens. And also between the verbal root and the preverb. Verbal root is dhatu, preverb is upasarga. Dhatu and upasarga, they share a unique relationship and the samhita in between a dhatu and a, an upasarga is obligatory. As a result, the sandhi is obligatory. And samhita is also obligatory within a compound or samasa. Samasa is a very productive and a very unique process of word formation in Sanskrit. And in a samasa, samhita is obligatory. However, within a sentence, the samhita expects the desire of the speaker. That means the samhita is dependent on the desire of the speaker. Whether the speaker wants to utter the sounds in samhita mode or not. Whether this, if the speaker wants, then there is samhita mode. But if the speaker doesn't want, then there isn't a samhita mode. And so we have an, an option. Let us look at examples one by one. First we have yan sandhi taking place within a pada, eka pada. So, yan sandhi within one word or eka pada. So, what is the definition of pada? The definition of pada given in the Ashtadhyayi that is applicable over here is suptingantam padam stated by 1414. What this means is that a verbal element at the end of which occur either a sup or a thing suffixes, that element is called pada. Sup and thing are the pratyaharas referring to respective suffixes that are added after the respective roots. Sup is a pratyahara formed in the sutra 412 and thing is a pratyahara of the suffixes formed in the sutra 3478. Sup is added to a pratipadika and thing is added to a dhatu and the resultant form is the pada fit to be used in a sentence. Now when the derivation of this pada is in process, there we notice yan sandhi taking place between the prakriti and the pratyaya. So these square brackets indicate that this is a pada and the plus sign indicates that there are two constituents of this pada. On the left hand side we have a prakriti and on the right hand side we have a pratyaya. And this prakriti and pratyaya they are always to be uttered in the samhita mode because this is one pada and within one pada samhita is obligatory. So prakriti and pratyaya they are to be joined together only then the one pada will come into existence as an output. So then this final part of the prakriti and the initial part of the pratyaya 
they come into close proximity. They are in the Samhita mode. In such a case, the Sutra 6177 applies and substitutes the Ik by Yan in the Prakriti. And this Ach within the Pratyaya remains unchanged as it is. So in this manner, the Sandhi, Yan Sandhi takes place within one Pada. This is also referred to as internal Sandhi, Sandhi within a Pada, internal Sandhi. Let us now look at the examples. So here we have five examples. All of them are the examples of Yan Sandhi happening in one Pada. So these are the Subantas that we have taken for the example purpose. The first one is Mati as the Prakriti followed by the suffix A which is the instrumental singular. So now this entire square bracket indicates that this will be the instrumental singular form of the, Pratip of the Pratipadika Mati. So in this case this T has got an E at the end. So this E and this A they come in close proximity. A is Ach in the environment of an Ach coming immediately after the previous E that is a Ik is substituted by Yan. So 6177 Iko Yanachi applies and then the output is Matya plus A and we have the form Matya the instrumental singular of the word Mati meaning intellect. Similarly, we have Gauri plus Os. This is the Shashti Dvivachana or genitive dual of the feminine word Gauri. Here there is long E followed by O. Long E is part of Ik. O is part of Ach. So this Ach comes immediately after this long E which is Ik. And then this Ik gets substituted by Yan after the application of Iko Yanachi 6177. So we have Gauriya plus Os. We join it together and we get the form Gauriyos. By doing the further processing, we get the form Gauriyoho. This is the Shashti Dvivachana. This is the Sandhi within one Pada. Next we have Vayu plus Os. This, these two examples, they had the vowel E and long E. Now the next two examples are going to have short U and long U. So Vayu plus Os. In this, once again we have O immediately preceded by U. U is Ik, O is Ach, O is Ach and so 6177 applies. And then we get the output Viv plus Os, Vivos and by further processing we get the form Vivoho which is the Shashti Saptami Dvivachana genitive as well as locative dual of the word Vayu. Gauriyoho is also Shashti Saptami Dvivachana of Gauri. So Vayu plus Os gives us this particular output. Vayu plus Os is one Pada. Similarly, we have Vadhu plus Au. In Vadhu, we have long U followed by the Pratyaya Au which has got a vowel. This is one Pada. This is the nominative and accusative dual Prathama Dvitiya Dvivachana Vadhu plus Au. So 6177 applies. And the output is Vadva plus Au. U is substituted by V and so we get the form Vadva. Similarly, we have Dhatru plus A. Dhatru plus A. This is the instrumental singular of Dhatru. 
here we have ru followed by a they are in the samhita mode and samhita is obligatory over here and so eco energy applies and the output output derived is dhatra plus a that is dhatra so these are the five examples where yan sandhi occurs within one pad after this sandhi is done the form becomes fit to be used in the sentence and so we have matya instrumental singular of mati gauriyo ho genitive and locative dual of gauri vayavo ho genitive and locative dual of vayu vadho nominative and accusative dual of vadhu and dhatra instrumental singular of dhatru next we have yan sandhi which is part of a sentence or vakya within a vakya when we say within a vakya it means yan sandhi between the padas because padas are the building blocks of the vakya a vakya is built out of the padas and so yan sandhi between the padas this is different than the previous instance when the yan sandhi took place within a pad so now if you see here there are two square brackets one left one to the left hand side of the plus sign and the one on the right hand side of the plus sign and they are having another set of square brackets indicating that this is one sentence one sentence consisting of two padas and two padas are in close proximity then what happens in this case the final element of the purva pada the pada that occurs before the plus sign is called purva pada and the initial vowel that occupies the initial position of the uttara pada these two vowels come in close proximity and then 6177 will apply and as a result the output would be the final element of the purva pada will be substituted by yan and the initial vowel in the uttara pada remains as it is so this is now the external sandhi where two padas forming a sentence they come in the samhita mode and then yan sandhi happens because of the fulfillment of the conditions and so this is pada external sandhi and let us see examples of this type of sandhi so we have asti and ekaha the first example there are in fact four examples on this slide and they are of e and u vowels respectively from the set of ik now asti plus ekaha these are two padas and asti is the tinganta form ekaha is the subanta form this constitutes one sentence and so we have e coming at the end of this first pada and a coming in the beginning of this second pada so this is the pada external sandhi the sandhi between two padas sandhi in the sentence so in this case 6177 eco energy applies and the output generated is astya e changes to ya plus ekaha that is astye kaha then we have asti and uttarasyam this is the famous beginning of the celebrated mahakavya called kumara sambhavam asti uttarasyam deshi devatatma himalayo nam nagadhi rajah and so on purva parau to ya nidhi vagaih sthita prithivya iva manadandah so asti and uttarasyam once again these are two padas asti is a tinganta pada and uttarasyam is the subanta pada 
E occurs at the end of asti, U occurs in the initial position of this pada uttarasyam and so they both are in the samhita mode and so the sutra 6177 applies and the output generated is astya and the output generated is astya uttarasyam that is astya uttarasyam. Similarly, you have astu plus ekaha. These are two padas. Astu is the tinganta form followed by ekaha, another subanta form. And here we have u followed by a. And this is a sentence. And there are these two padas in close proximity. So these two vowels are in the proximity in the samhita mode. And so 6177 eco yanachi applies and the output is astva ekaha and astvekaha. Similarly, astu akarmani. This is taken from the famous verse of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, which was quoted right at the beginning. Karmanya vadhikaraste ma faleshu kadachana ma karma phalahitur bhur mate sango astu akarmani. Mate Sangostva Karmani. So Astu plus Akarmani. Astu is the Tinganta form. Akarmani is the Subanta form. U occurs at the end of this Pada. A occurs at the beginning of this Subanta Pada. Now U and A are in close proximity. They are in Samhita. And so we have 6177 applying and generating the output in the form of Astva Akarmani. Astva Karmani. Now, since this is a Vakya, why we must also note that in the Vakya, in the sentence, the Samhita also depends on the Vivaksha. So here there is Vivaksha to do the Samhita. And so after that, we apply the grammatical rules and derive the output. So in this case, we have both vivaksha as well as the grammatical rules applying. What if there is no vivaksha of samhita? So if there is no vivaksha, which is the desire to speak, the desire of the speaker to speak, the speaker does not want to utter these examples in the Samhita mode, then what do we do? Then no grammatical rule is applied because there is no Samhita intended by the speaker. Even though these are the two Padas which are in proximity, the speaker does not want to utter them in the close proximity, in the Samhita. Probably the speaker wants to have some gap in between. And then E followed by A, because it is not in close proximity, there won't be any output generated by 6177 because 6177 will not be applied. So the same output will be returned. Asti ekaha is the input, no rule applying, asti ekaha is the output, absence of any sandhi, no substitute coming in place of ik. Similarly, in Asti Uttarasyam, there is no vivaksha that these two are uttered in close proximity and therefore there is no Samhita and therefore Iko Yanachi does not apply here and therefore we don't have the Sandhi taking place and the output is the same as the input. Asti Uttarasyam is the input, no grammatical rule applies and asti uttarasyam is the output. Similarly, you have astu plus ekaha, the same example. And once again, because there is no vivaksha of the samhita mode, so eko yanachi does not apply and astu ekaha is the input and it is returned as the output. There is no adesha, no yan sandhi taking place. Similarly, astu akarmani, if the speaker does not intend to have the samhita mode, then obviously 
eco energy does not apply and so we don't have any sandhi and we return the input as it is so astu akarmani is the input astu akarmani is the output so in the text of shrimad bhagavad gita however samhita is what is intended by the speaker and therefore we do the sandhi and we return astva karmani as the output now yan sandhi between upasarga and dhatu upasarga is a list of elements which are prefixed to the verbal roots namely dhatus these upasargas bring about change in the meaning of the verbal roots or the dhatus and they are pra para ap sam anu av nis nir dus dur etc 22 in number dhatu is a verbal root denoting an action stated by the sutra bhuvadayo dhatava which says that the list of verbal elements beginning with bhu and meaning an action are termed as dhatu and upasarga and dhatu they both are stated to be obligatorily in the samhita mode so here are the examples adhi and ayana so adhi is the upasarga and aya or e is the dhatu and then we have this obligatory samhita so e followed by a and they are uttered in the samhita mode so 6177 eco energy applies and the output generated is adhya ayana adhyayana similarly you have anu as the upasarga preverb followed by iksha the verbal root to see and then we have 6177 applying because samhita is nitya and the output generated is anva plus iksha anviksha similarly pari plus ejana and we have pari as the upasarga eja as the verbal root and so 6177 applies and pariya plus ejana is the output and pariye jana is what we get eja means to tremble now yant sandhi within a samasa and here are four examples these examples are taken from the vyakarana siddhanta kaumudi so we have sudhi plus upasya and sudhi has got a long e followed by u they are in the samhita mode and therefore 6177 applies and we have the output suddhya plus upasya and we will take up this example for discussion next when we talk about the sthanivad bhava in yan sandhi similarly you have madhu plus ari this is a sam- samasa or a compound and so samhita is obligatory and so you have u followed by a in the samhita mode and so 6177 applies and the output generated is madhva plus ari madhvari similarly you have dhatru plus amsha and this is a samasa and so samhita is obligatory and so you have ru followed by a in close proximity so 6177 applies and the output generated is dhatra plus amsha dhatramsha similarly you have lu plus akriti this is a samasa and so samhita is obligatory and so you have 6177 applying and the output generated is l plus akriti that is la kriti these are the four examples of yan sandhi occurring within a compound and within a compound sandhi is obligatory primarily because samhita is obligatory here is a note on vivaksha in all the previously discussed cases two principles are seen working the first is vivaksha the desire to speak by the speaker 
in all the cases this is there wherever you do the samhita mode you do the sandhi vivaksha is playing an important role and then after there is the samhita the next principle is the grammatical rule stated in the paninian grammar that grammatical rule also plays an important role to derive the desired form in the sentence however there are two possibilities that arise both principles work together there is vivaksha to do the samhita and then the grammatical rules apply so both principles work together or sometimes only one principle works namely the vivaksha and no grammatical rules apply this is the interpretation of the statement that we quoted earlier to summarize what we have discussed in this lecture the yan sandhi applies internally as well as externally within a pada as well as between the padas within a pada where the pada is the output and within a vakya where the pada is the input and the vakya is the output the yan sandhi applies in different environments and we have studied those environments in detail in this lecture now this application will become an input for the accent rules to apply which we shall study in the coming lectures thank you for your attention